Hey, yo, 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 this is DJ Potential on the Kinetic PE Mix Show. We got a very important show for you guys today, man. You don't want to go nowhere, man. You're going to enjoy this show, man. We got uh, someone who I was chopping it up with on the other side. I think you're going to enjoy this guy's energy. You know, so, like, sit back. We got to run the intro real quick, and we'll be right, right back. What's going on? We got internal of the Wu-Tang Killer Bees here. He got a show tomorrow in Reesburg, Wisconsin. You want to make sure you are there for that show. Uh, so he's going to uh, chop it up with us. Tell him, tell us what's, what he got going on. He's calling in from California today, but he will be in the building literally in Reesburg tomorrow. But he's right now here live in the wreck in the virtual building on the Gennady PE Mix Show. What's going on, God? Yo, peace, Lord. How you living? I'm doing good, brother. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to talk with you today, man. Uh, so, like, they, they heard hey, me. Man, uh, much love, man. Yeah, good. I, you know, much love. I want, I want to give a shout out to, you know, VT for, you know what I'm saying, connecting us and making it happen. So, you know, definitely want to pay, you know, homage to him, you know what I'm saying? So, much love to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Wisconsin, stand up. You know, it's about to be brutal, son. And thank you so much, too, sir, yeah. for having me on your line. Yeah, indeed, man. Uh, it's a pleasure, man, to have you, man. Like, uh, so they heard me kind of like briefly kind of introduce you. But in your own words, man, like tell us a little bit about yourself, man. And um, and, and just like just where you came from and, and like how you get to where you are now. Um, I'm eternal. Wu-Tang Killer Bees. Um, a lot of people know me by my born name, Latifu Sams. Um, I'm originally from San Diego, California, born and raised. Um, shit. I'm damn near 45 years old. I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I've just been swinging my sword on me since like the early 90s and shit, like 92. You know what I mean? And um, I actually, you know, picked the mic for the first time, like, I think back in, like, 86. Then, like, 1986. So we're around there. There was some essays, some DJs. There was some essays. Some of the Mexican homies up in the hood. And, um, you know, I was a little young nigga and shit, running through the apartments and stuff, through the, you know, the projects and the block. Or just music and shit. And I was like, yo, like it captured my attention in my head. You know, not randomly just walked into these dudes' houses and shit, you know? And um they were bumping um LL Cool J, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, radio. And um I saw the mic and it was just like an instant thing and shit. Like I grabbed the fucking mic and was just trying to like say something if the vibe was there and i don't know how i became but i don't know if the dude like i told me like did you want to record something or if i asked him if i want to record something but one thing i do know is like the next thing i think is like i ran to my fucking grandma's house and shit and i grabbed one of her tapes which later on i regret because i got my ass whooped for it but this is when we had the cassette tapes. Yeah. You put the toilet paper in the little holes in the cassette tapes. I remember so that, man. The regular tape. So this was yeah. a tape. If you had tape, it already came with the little thing, so you can automatically record on it. But mm -hmm. if you got a, if you had a cassette tape, like an actual like cassette, like a, like an album, whatever, the holes were empty. But if you put right. toilet paper in the holes, you were able to record over that motherfucker. Yep. And um, I think it was like one of my grandma's like James Brown's tapes. I didn't know. I didn't think about it or anything. But anyways, I grabbed the tape, I ran across back the streets to the Essays crib and shit. And they put on the instrumental and it was uh, the Fat Boys. The Fat Boys are back. Mm -hmm. It's when the Fat Boys back album was coming out and shit. 
and I rapped over that. And I was like six years old. So actually, so no, so this is actually 1984. So actually this happened in 1984. And I remember running back down the block. Oh, I got a tape. I made a tape. I made a tape, which yeah. I was not <laughs> in any way, shape or form, like the greatest or I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. It was just the fact that I <laughs> fucking put my voice on this cassette tape because yeah. be before then, it was Christmas and shit. And uh, my mom bought me the Michael Jackson doll. And so this is like 84, 85-ish, you know, when uh, Thriller came out. Right. And there was a Michael Jackson doll. But the Michael Jackson doll came with a microphone. And if you took that microphone and you put it next to a radio on the AM station, and you talked in the microphone, you can hear yourself coming out of the speakers of the radio. Yeah. It was fucking nuts. <laughs> nuts. Like just to be able to talk this microphone and hear, hear me coming out of the radio. So it was like, it was destined in things. And then, um, you know, throughout the years and shit, like, like my mom was heavy on drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, and she beat the fuck out of me. Yeah, you know, my mom smoked crack for six years, and um, and when she couldn't get her shit on me. Like it was like my fault, you know, and. Like every week I had a new daddy and shit. It's like whoever had the whoever had the dope, you know, my mom was fucking with him for that time. And you know, I used to call these niggas like dad and shit. Right. And you know, that was my, my way of like connecting with them and being able to get like a quarter, fifty cents or whatever to be able to go out and go play Pac Man and shit. Or to go get some tacos from the taco shop. Mm -hmm. Because they were just in the house getting high. And I was running the streets and shit. And yeah, bro. Duh. And um one day and shit, I went to school and uh, um in the chair hurt to sit down. It hurt real fucking bad. And my teacher lifted up my shirt. And um, she saw the marks and the bruises and shit. Right. And um, she sent me down to the nurse and shit. And um, you know, they like took a look at me and told me to sit back down in the fucking office and everything. And then I remember, like, maybe, like, a couple hours later, these two white dudes coming to the school. They look at me, and they go into the nurse's office to school. Mm -hmm. Then a few minutes later, these come out and, like, yo, we're going to go for a little ride. And I'm like, all right, you know, am I coming back? They're like, yeah, 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 you be back. I didn't know my mom again. I've seen my mom again for like 20 years. Damn. I was like six years old. Wow. And in the process, and in the process of that, I was like in 13 foster homes, five orphanages. And like six boy in group homes. And I remember being in them places and shit. Being bullied and shit, abused. Mm -hmm. Niggas shot the weird shit. But it created something. Yeah. It created a fucking monster. And when I was about like 14 and shit, I started like start writing.
Plus, you know, in them foster homes, homes, they like medication and shit. They, they can control you because if you had energy or you was hyped, they call it, you're hyperactive. You got ADHD. Yeah. You're uncontrollable. Exactly. You need to take Ritalin or take Thorazine or whatever. These niggas were trying to pump me up with pills and shit. And so my aunt one day went to court and fought to get me off. And um, I remember being in the business. I started to get more into like, you know, MCA, DJ Quick. You know, shit from the West Coast. And, and um, you know, you know, Eric B. Rakim and EPMD and Public Enemy and all that shit. And, you know, really starting, you know, take it to the, you know, take it to the pen and pad and shit. You know, wow. and, um, and, um, started like trying to like somewhat make my own beats and shit with the cassette tapes. But to make a long story short, I started making tapes in the boot in the in the group homes and the books, you know, because every Friday and shit we got like an allowance, you know, during the week we would like do yeah. chores and shit, this shit, scrub walls, cut the grass, whatever, and we get the allowances on on Friday, you know, three, four bucks, whatever, to set shit and get like a slurpee, some baseball cards, comic books, or whatever. And if you were really good and you didn't get no trouble and you was and you and you know, you did all your homework and all that shit. Then you got to go like to the skating ring, like on, on the weekend or to the, the movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was too busy in the room to writing raps and making tapes. And then on Fridays and shit, I used to fucking get these white boys and shit for they fucking allowance money. I used to go <laughs> and make a tape. Yeah. And you should sell the tape to the kids and shit. To the point where like even like the staff members picking them things up. Then I got out in like, like ninety four for a little bit, and then I made a couple of tapes, and I just slang them at the at the car wash, the barber, the barber shop, on the streets and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Into my aunt, get the fuck out and shit. And then I ended up going back into the fucking system and shit, and mm -hmm. then got back to the raps, and then uh, then I finally got released in ninety six. You know what I mean? I could have left earlier and shit, but they gave they gave me a choice. You can leave now. You know what I mean? You're 18. You're an adult, or you can stay another six months, but you will leave high school diploma. So I left the high school diploma, and all the money that I had from scrubbing walls and shit and everything and slanging tapes, I saved up that money to a few thousand dollars, and then I got out. And I went to fucking Merritt College of Medical Careers. Right. I got into medical school on my own. Just being that nigga who was smart and just wanted to get into something. I was heavy into like x-rays and helping people. I used to volunteer at the hospitals and shit. You know what I'm saying? When I got my first job at Popeye's Chicken in Oceanside, mm -hmm. California and shit. And, um, but from there, you know what I'm saying? I got out, next and shit. I started my own record label, Castlevania Entertainment. Yeah, Castlevania and, uh, out, the, the sophomore album. In the studio one day when I studio. Yeah, yeah. And I seen that shit and, uh, Started, I produced all the beats and made all the beats from scratch, written them, arranged them, all that shit. I was using like the fucking ARS or 10, the Triton LE. There was no MPC at that time. Yeah. It was just the ARS or 10 and shit. You used to load in the sounds and shit, play everything from scratch, from the drums, the hi hats, the, you know, the snares to the, the strings, whatever. And then, of course, samples and shit. Right. And then, um, so yeah, man, 1996, I got into the lab and shit. I was going through a little bit, moved around a lot with South Carolina, but I still had it. In uh, 2000 and shit, I dropped an app called Castlevania, straight from the dungeon, which would mean some of my homies from Dago and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, they, a couple of, one that I grew up with was Shopper. The other ones I met in college and shit, and just on the block. And um, dropped that album. I think I hang single handedly, you know, went and got that shit into stores, Target, 
Sam Goody, Music Trader, like major record stores on consignment. Yeah. And then there was a music awards and shit, which I never even knew they existed. And I was nominated and blew me the fuck away. And I was like, what? It was like, yeah, nigga, you got nominated for a music award. It's like, huh? I'm just a fucking <laughs> orphan kid from the projects from the block who's yeah. like tapes and shit. You know what I mean? And um, I was like, wow. I didn't win, but just the fact that I, I, I was nominated and it was in the papers mm -hmm. and shit, I was like, whoa. So that gave me the ambition and the hype to get back in the lab and do a sequel. Castlevania 2, The Purple Angels. And that album, I got nominated for two music awards, Best Album and Best um, best Rap Performance, Group Performance or whatever. And I won for Best Album. And um, there's not a lot of motherfuckers out there that got an American Music Award. So I was no. really proud of that. It's, it's, it's rare, 1997. Brother. I'm at the fucking, I'm at the fucking bus stop. I'm in college, freshman, go mess the college. I'm mm -hmm. downtown in San Diego. I'm at the fucking bus stop. This is nigga down there selling CDs. I run up to this nigga. I'm like, yo, what's up? And I took a look at him. And I took a second look at him. And I took a third look. <laughs> I was all like, he looked familiar. So I walked up to him. I was like, yo, he said, you look familiar. He was like, yeah, I'm Killer Priest. You know, push my album, Heavy Mental. I'm just like, but didn't you just come out of the fucking store and buy all the copies of your fucking album? <laughs> He's like, yeah. Because I get my Scantron points. Then I bring all my shit out here to the streets and then resell it. So now I get my pun of scans and I get to make my bread. This is before Lil Wayne did this shit. Lil yeah. Wayne did the same shit. Yeah. 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. He gave a bunch of niggas a bunch of money to go to every record store to go buy all his albums out of the store and bring yeah. it back to him. And then he went out and then he pushed them as merch. Smart move. Yeah, but very smart. First, nineteen ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how I, that's how I got connected. That was my connection with the Wu. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then after that, I just kept pushing and grinding throughout the years, putting out material, getting on Wu Tang mixtapes, which I'm on over thirty five Wu Tang mixtapes. And doing track with random, you know, artists from the, you know, and as well as Young Dirty Bastard. And, um, I end up getting six platinum records, and one and one gold record, and my American Music Award. And um, and then yeah, man, you know, it was a, it was a journey, it was a struggle, you know, shit is real, you know. I was getting beat fuck up at my younger age and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, from from a person who's supposed to take care of you. So I grew up not trusting nobody. That's not including when I was 10 years old. My grandma bought me a watch. And my mm -hmm. mom fucking took it off my arm when I was sleeping and smoked it up for a $5 rock. That pissed my grandma off. Made me very sad. So she went out and bought me laser tag. And my mom and my grandma hit it. Make sure my mom didn't get her hands on it to go out and s sell it for some crack. But, you know, the most craziest thing, though, is like in 2000 and shit, I started pushing crack heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe. <laughs> I sold crack to my mom. Hey, that's a, I was selling crack to my mom. But man. I didn't look at my mom as that. I looked at her as like, okay, yeah, you gave birth to me. But you wait, mom, I sell like 10 and 20 pieces. Well, the way she, well, she used to come to me and say, oh, well, my friend wants to, I knew it was for her, though. Or it right. was probably for that nigga. But either way, you're going to get a hit. They probably end up sucking his dick along with it because ain't no nigga going to give away his motherfucking shit for free unless you're giving up something. 
So she was probably in the back turning tricks or some shit, you know. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I love my mom. You only got one, and I forgive yeah. her for any, everything that she's done to me. But the fact, the reality is, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, she made me an orphan. She chose crack and some nigga over me, multiple niggas over me, and didn't put the, and she picked the pipe in the 70s. Mm -hmm. She didn't put the pipe down until like the early 2000s. That's a long run on the pipe, nigga. Oh, you know man, that's, that's a, that's a oh, journey. Ooh, that's a year's journey worth. Oh, yeah, nigga. Right. Yeah. And, and so crazy it is, she still looks good. I'm like, you one of them lucky crack set smokers. Like, you still look good. Most motherfuckers' skin's all pruned up like raisins and shit. Who you telling? On and some shit. I'm like, God, yeah. mother love you. I must have gave you that holy smoke. Cause, you know what I'm <laughs> Teflon. saying? Teflon. That's that Teflon. <laughs> Teflon, you know, like man. Last shit. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Well, I get like they always say, black don't crack, nigga. Even uh, in the hardest places and shit, black don't crack. Exactly. And if you smoke crack, that shit don't crack. You might be gassy than a motherfucker, but with some right. cocoa butter and lotion, you'll look pearly <laughs> like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> That's for real. Yeah, man. So, so man, man, you you got an inspiring story, man. Yeah, man. But anyways, though. Yeah, man, I'm sorry, man. I almost started crying earlier and shit, but shit's real, homie. No, no, no. We we really need that though. We, we need that for me. real. We need that. I'm not afraid to cry. I'm not afraid to be real. I'm not afraid to cry. And fuck any nigga who got. I want to say, meet me out here in L.A. any day, nigga. You know what I mean? Good luck, nigga. Trying to make it through Compton or Long Beach, nigga. Good luck trying to survive in Dago, nigga. Talking that shit. <laughs> when I'm done, homie, I have all types of niggas, blood and crip walking all on your face. Smash your shit to this ground beef patties and get the fuck out of here, nigga. It's West Coast, nigga. Kill a Cali, nigga. Still we'll take forever. Bad. I'm humble and cool as fuck, but don't cross that line. You know what I'm saying? Shit. There you go. I got midgets go. out here, homie, that are three foot tall, that are smoky for a six pack of Corona and a corner side of burrito. Don't fuck with me. That's for real, man. <laughs> hey, that's for real. You gotta keep them on deck. You know, so so man, eternal man, like you know, mm -hmm. like just just looking at like you know how things that's is. That's that Lucas for my West Coast Mexican niggas out there. They know what that Lucas is. That's that essay shit. That real man. Oh, okay. Candy. Luca, Lucas Holmes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like, man, just just looking at like how 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 the game is now, like you know, and just like just your whole career, man. You you really like been putting out that real, man. And like, you know, what what is your view on the game right now as it is on the music business? This shit, the music, the music tape is, is the music tape right now, and this game is fucked. You know what I'm saying? He's trash. He'd be signed to a record label called Transgender. Because they transitioned into an era and the gender can't handle it. Hip hop was built for fucking street niggas. You got niggas out here wearing dresses. You know what I mean? If you want to wear a dress and look cute and shit, go take yourself to a PDD party. Puff Daddy nigga will welcome you. Take you to the room and rub your booty and kiss you and give you record deal and shit while his dick is in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Take that shit over there. Get the fuck out of here with that shit with Wu Tang, bitch. Hey man, I, I'm I'm glad you spoke on that and I, I'm glad that like you you know you kept it raw and uncut. It's buzz for you. It's buzz <laughs> for you. I want to get shout out to my sponsor, it's Budweiser. Budweiser. The beard made by white folks that niggas love in the hood. Thank you very much. Like our <laughs> Budweiser. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm a fool. Oh, I'm man. Gonna one of the interviews. Hey. I'm going to give it to you. Happy, hey, man. Sad, I... Real, gutter, butter. <laughs> shit. Let's don't, hey, let's don't get into my wife because that shit, everybody knows I'm notorious for, for shitting on my wife on interviews, honey. You know, so, so, you know what I'm saying? Fuck her too. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kiss my ass. Kiss my black ass and all the blackness in it. The black hole. You know what I mean? Bitches ain't shit but holes and tricks, and my wife is one of them. I try to put my wife on eBay, nigga, and nobody don't want to copy because they probably know she's <laughs> fucked up and crazy and shit. But if there's any Damn. nigga out that's lonely, yeah. sad, you need someone to hold on, on to, someone to make you feel comfortable, you can come take my bitch, and it's free. But the catch is, you can't return it. There's no returns, no refunds, <laughs> no nada. No Indian given. Hey. Once you take no, it in, George, uh, then I will man. happily have her and her luggage outside on the curb for you to come pick it up. That's sweet and fast. That's cool. That's a real nigga. See, I'm assisting you yeah. to make the journey easy. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hey, why, why are we going to have an interview the like no other? You ain't going to forget this yeah, shit. You're yeah. like, this nigga eternal stupid nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got you got my insides turning, bro. <laughs> like, hey, so like, why, why are we on the subject, though? Like, you know, like, hey, so what, what's, what's really going on with, like, our women nowadays, man? And, like, you know, like, it's a lot of, like, you know what I'm saying, stuff they putting out there, you know, Bashing, bashing the man. You know, man it's, it's, the what's okay, going now, on? To, to be on some, on some, let's let's to be serious. You know, to the side. You know, we live in this, in a in a generation now where, you know, you know, you know, the internet. You got all this online shit. You have, a, you know, you know, people are feeling more free to be able to express themselves, free to be able to come out and do the things they normally would not do. You know, the internet has given people a, 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 a should I say, like a mask, you know, a right. sense of fucking, you know, you know, um, to unleash or whatever. And and it's also created people to be lazy. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, especially with these cameras. Now everybody with the cameras and shit, like everyone's brave. You know, it's like you got that white lady who will go to the hood and talk to some black dude in in, 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 the court, in the parking lot of, of, of Walmart and call them all types of niggers and fuck you, you black bitch with the boot. But she got her camera on because she knows, oh, if I get this black motherfucker who hits me on camera, you know what I'm saying, then he's going to go jail. So as long as I got my camera on, he ain't going to touch me. And I can call him every motherfucking goddamn thing from A to Z in the goddamn alphabet. He can't do shit about it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, they also do it like in public. You won't catch no motherfucking body like that in the hood doing that shit, especially some white lady and shit. You know what I mean? And then you got these young, young girls and shit, you know, who are all on Instagram and social media and shit who are beautiful as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And they've caught on to the game. You know what I mean? It's like pimping has took, like being a pimp and, to, and pimping has took a whole nother level. Like I'm out here in Atlanta pipping, you know, California, Vegas, you know what I'm saying? It was on up with pimps and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Pimpology 101, two short set, nigga, but this is Pimpology 102 from Eternal. You know, bitches out here are macking on niggas. They pimping niggas. You know, these bitches are going online and shit, do their little on, on, only fan shit, show their pussies, show their titties and shit. You know, you got niggas out there grabbing their dicks and twisting it like a goddamn beer cap or like a fucking Pepsi, a Pepsi Cola cap or some shit, trying to get in that. And these bitches that ask these chump niggas and shit for like eight bills, five hundred dollars, fifty bucks. And these niggas out there shooting bread. These bitches are pimping these niggas. You know what I mean? And it's like also, you know, you got society who's so caught up in social media, TMZ, anything they see, they believe. Yeah. You know, the, the the government and the president. And you know what I'm saying? And the Illuminati has went out their way to mind control and to manipulate the brain. You know what I mean? Putting little gay images and shit into cartoons and shit. Coming out and talking about Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street or a gay couple. Nigga, like, I watched Sesame Street growing up. You know what I'm saying? And now, 2000s, you want to come out and say, oh, yeah, by the way, it's their gay couple. And SpongeBob SquarePants is fucking gay. 
You know what I mean? The shit that they install in the kids, the minds of the children to make it seem like, oh, it's okay to be gay. And then they want to, you know what I'm saying, counsel culture you with some shit if you have the nerve to say anything about anybody from the LGBT community or the gay, whatever, some shit. But some of the dopest shit in the 80s, like Eddie Murphy's Raw or Eddie Murphy's mm-hmm. Delirious or Richard Pryor, some shit, they shitting on niggas. Nobody ain't saying nothing. You Nobody. got too many yeah. powerful people with all this money and shit, with sensitive feelings and shit that are part of this LGBT community. And I mean, some of your biggest motherfuckers are part of the LGBT community. Community Puff Daddy, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen the DeGeneres, you know what I'm saying? You know, Kevin Hart, regardless of what you say, shit, there's niggas mm-hmm. out there who are getting fingers in the booty hole. You know, Will Smith, yeah. you think Will Smith got fucking Fresh Prince of Bear Lair and, and out of nowhere? Nah. You know what I'm saying? Quincy Jones, nigga, and, and, and QD3 was all in that nigga's ass cheeks. That's how you got mm-hmm. the role for fucking Independence Day. You know, these niggas, you know, people don't understand Will Smith's first role was when he was in The Man with the White Boy, but motherfucking yeah. fucking naked. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know Damn. what I'm saying? You sell yourself to the devil, you get, in, you get involved with these vultures, homie. You know what I'm saying? Let them rub on your ass cheeks and you'll go the next way. Hey, you know, there's a nigga right now on, 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 fate, on YouTube. There's a nigga on YouTube who got a record deal with Cash Money. He literally came out and said he had sex with Birdman for the record deal. The nigga exhibit, the homie, the game. You know what I mean? They let you know, nigga, puffy parties and shit. Niggas in the bedroom getting their ass cheeks rubbed on, getting their nicks, cr- um, you know, you know, what I'm saying crushed on and shit. Someone's getting the dick in the booty. Someone's catching the shit out. The the industry is crazy. <clears throat> it's demonic. You know what I'm right. saying? And just like Joe Biden, I'm not for Biden. I'm not for Trump. Trump did a lot more motherfucking shit for goddamn African Americans than a lot of motherfuckers know, but they're not going to display that. And goddamn right. Joe Biden pimped every motherfucking body, especially when he came out and said, oh, if, you, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. But then he over here asking for a trillion dollars in the fucking goddamn equity and some shit and got the whole goddamn country and the world in the motherfucking goddamn pandemic, you know, extension, which is inflation. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that trillion dollars that he got, Majority of that money was going to all other countries, like 250 million or 200 or 250 billion was going to China. It's kind of funny how you guys all want to sit here and shit on China and say, oh, China was a cause for fucking, the, you know, the fucking goddamn pandemic with the Wuhan, blah, 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 blah. But you guys are about to give these niggas 25 billion. That's like you going into the fucking hood and, and finding a nigga that smoked your cousin. And saying, yeah. yo, I'm going to invest in you because I see you doing good on the block. Let me shoot you 150 rats. But even though you shot my you shot my relatives, I'm going to fuck with you. That don't make no sense. No, if not at all. somebody is responsible for bringing fucking hundreds and hundreds of thousands to their goddamn fucking demise, why the fuck are you going to go back and give them bread? That's just like us giving fucking weapons to fucking Ukraine to fight Russia. Russia ain't got no beef with us. No. Nah. It's all mental. They yeah. give you guys storylines. Everyone always believe all this shit. When you see white motherfuckers outside playing kickball and having a good time, but they're all also saying we're in the middle of, uh, of Ukraine and there's missiles flying by, but we out here playing kickball, get the fuck out of here. If there's gunshots yeah, in the fucking yeah. hood going off, ain't, no- ain't nobody coming streets. outside. Yeah, nobody coming outside. Get in the house. Yeah. God right. forbid there's a motherfucking goddamn tank or missiles going off in the middle of the street and you're going to be like, oh, it's okay. We're going to come out here and barbecue and play kickball while the tanks are rolling down a block and missiles are going off that could kill you in any second. Get the fuck out of here. It's an entertainment. Entertainment is, is you know, like like Karis once said back in the day, it's edutainment. Education and entertainment. Educating your ass through this entertainment. They monop- they they they're manipulating your fucking brains. This G five shit's yeah. got your fucking brain waves all fucking scrambled and shit like a fucked up fucking goddamn we're walk- uh walkie talkie and shit. You can't find the right channel because you're all scrambled. You're not on the same right. wavelength. There's no red pill or no blue pill. You know what I'm saying? You're caught right. in the middle, like purgatory. You're wondering and shit, hoping that God. God will let you into heaven, but right now you're feeling the pains of hell, but you're not in hell. You're not really feeling the cool breeze of heaven, but you're feeling 
uncomfortable to stay there and until God gives you that final pass. So we ain't going to make you burn. You ain't going to come into heaven and drink champagne with Tupac, but you're going to be right now in this little middle area and some shit where you can think about the shit you've done and let me figure out what I want to do with you until then. That's where America's at. Right now, we're in a situation where we're so in, a, in the middle. These niggas can do the fuck they want to do with us. They can kill us, destroy us, which they're already doing. They can cut it down mm -hmm. any time. One minute you're rich on cryptocurrency, then five hours later you're broke because the shit went down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the highs and the lows. That's Man. Your emotions. Yeah. That fucks with your mind. That too. You know what I'm saying? That's like being bipolar. One minute you're happy, right. next minute you're sad. You know what I mean? It's uncontrollable right. emotions. Now you gotta go see the doctor and get pills. And that's what the pharmaceutical companies are waiting for, is for these mm -hmm. motherfuckers to mentally televise and, and cell phone eyes and online fuck with your mind where you're mentally and gonna run to the other big homies who are the pharmaceutical companies who are gonna peel you up and they all making money. The news stations are getting their goddamn views and they broadcasters and shit making money. The pharmaceutical companies are making money because you're all lining up like counting sheep because your minds are all fucked up. Verizon and all these other phone companies are getting paid by the government and shit for they got them satellites to fuck with your brain. Why fucking goddamn Tesla and shit? Some out here sending niggas to fucking space for the first time. Niggas has been in space. If they haven't, they would have never made Planet of the Apes. They've been sending motherfucking niggas to space like monkeys. They just ain't told you about that shit. We've right. been experimental, nigga. Keep it one thigh wow. And that's what my whole album is about. It's everything I'm talking to you about right now. It's that's what that my cloth. brand new album, Atlas, <laughs> is all about. Man. Everything from my personal life story with me, my mom being on drugs, to me being in group homes, to me running this G5 shit, to the presidential, to the Catholic priest, molesting children in churches and shit. And the New World Order and the reptilians and these lizard people and fucking Alex fucking goddamn fucking, you know what I'm saying? Just people being, you know, Alex Jones being banned off YouTube because he's speaking the truth, but you want to call it conspiracy theory. I'm talking about all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Shit. Marilyn Manson, the rock star, is one of my good homies and shit. And he's very intelligent as well. My new album was inspired by me listening to the rock band Tool. The rock mm -hmm. band Metallica, the rock band Iron Maiden, the rock band Megadeth, listening to some West Side Gun, some Conway the Machine, listening to the Deftones, listening to Master Don, listening to Kiss, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of DJ Quick, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of X Clan here and there, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and, um, yeah. So that goulash of picks and that goulash of a pit, you know what I'm saying? So I'll, this album was heavily influenced writing by rock bands. You know, I'm a, I'm a big heavy metal head, rock head. I listen yeah. to a lot of heavy metal, rock music. I write my rhymes to the shit. I like gothic music, dark music. And then I take my lyrics and I put it on a rap beat. I refuse to listen to rap music and write lyrics. I don't want to sound like nobody. I don't want to imitate nobody. Right. I want to be in my own zone. I want to be in my own lane. I'm a really dark, a dark individual, you know? You know what I'm saying, but I'm a, one of the most coolest, most humblest, most down to earth, most fun people that you will ever meet. I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm just a regular ass dude at the end of the day. I don't think I'm better than no other rapper. I don't give a fuck if you're a local rapper, upcoming rapper, a big rapper. I'm on the even playing field with everybody. I love everybody. I fucks with everybody. I've put more local and up and coming artists on tours and shows than some of your big rappers, and that's facts. So you know, I'm all about looking out for the up and coming for the younger generation. You know, at the end of the damn day, it's all about leaving a legacy. Exactly. It's not about making money, how many jewels you got, how big is your house, whatever. It's all about your legacy, the hearts that you touch, the minds that you touch. That's why 30 years later, Tupac is being played because he touched people's hearts. He touched people's minds and he's still being talked about to, yeah. to this day. You know what I'm saying? The goal is, to, is not to create something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, great, the goal is not to create something super fire and dope. But the, the goal is to create something that's going to last forever. That's your legacy. So 20 years, 30 yeah. years from now, motherfuckers to speak on your name because you touched their heart. You gave them something they can relate to. You got into their fucking, you know what I'm saying? You became one with the fucking listener 
and the listener become one with the artist, also known as the fan. You know what I mean? So if you get a million yeah. motherfucking people to tap into you and say, yo, I can connect with this nigga. That's a million motherfuckers who are going to buy your shit. Now you're going platinum because you were able to express yourself and to tap in with the hearts and minds of a million other motherfuckers. Nuff said, eternal Wu-Tang Killer Bees, West Coast. Man, I love it, man. Talking that cloth, like, you know what I'm saying? Pure, pure wisdom, you know, pure realness, rawness, man. That's what we <clears> do <throat> in, in the world right now. We appreciate you so much, brother, man. Like, you know, you know, like, and I'm humble right now, man. I'm humble to be to ha- be able to have you, for, for me to be able to share my platform with you. You know, uh, it's it's a pleasure, bro. You know, so like, uh, yeah, man, I t- appreciate you having me on too. Yeah, so the show's tell us, going man. down tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Tinder, yeah, the show's going down tomorrow night, April 29th. Tinder bars and sass. You know what I'm saying? With my homie Big Sabo. I fuck with that dude tough. That's my nigga from day one. I only met him at one show, but it feel like meeting and building with that dude has been like a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? And um, shout out to Smoking Records. You know what I'm saying? My man Randy. You know what I'm saying? They, and um, and the Bud dudes, you know, because uh, these are two shows back to back. Wisconsin, mm-hmm. Illinois. Um, so I'm very thankful to be working with my homie Big Sabo again. And uh Randy Gibson, smoking records, and all parties and, and that's involved, all the local acts who are all performing. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a good time. Much love, respect to all the local acts and all the artists and MCs in Wisconsin, Illinois and shit. So it's going to be going down all night in the bars and sass. And then on Saturday, April 30th, we're going to be doing a show at the uh, Route 34 Pub and Grub in uh, Sandwich, Illinois. So two shows back, back to back. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be off the fucking monkey bars. You know what I'm saying? So bring your bananas, nigga, because it's going to be bananas. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? White bitches and shit showing their titties. You know what I'm saying? Midgets shooting ping pong balls out of their pussies and shit. Clowns doing surgical acts and shit. You know what I'm saying? We got the Jabberwockies out there. They're going to crit walk. No, I'm playing. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man. uh, It's going to be fun. Positive vibes. If you're on that bullshit, on that negativity shit, on that gangbanging shit, on that bullshit, you know what I mean? If you got a crazy ass bitch, all that shit and your bitch, stay at home. I don't need (laughs) none of that. It's all about fun positivity if you want to show your titties come on out we'd love to see them you want to suck a nigga's dick please come through i'll bring you back store backstage for a secret meet and greet um yeah man all the weed you know what i'm saying edibles bring that i'll take that too you know what i'm saying if anybody's mom out there want to cook me a home cooked meal i'll eat that too and if she's fine and she wants some dick afterwards i'll give that to her too you know <laughs> You know, I'm a gigolo on, on, on the road. I'm a male prostitute. Um, you know, I go for $50,000, yeah. you know, uh, uh, per nut. So every time a bitch busts a nut, I need my 50 stacks. Um, you know, uh, any race, any age is welcome. Just have my money up front. Condoms are required. And, um, yeah, grandmas, uncles, um, grandmas, aunties. I got homies out there and shit, too, that, you know, but yeah, man, come have a good time, have a good show, and you know, bring your moms, and she might get some good dick too. You know, make her a fan for life. I'm just joking. <laughs> all this is all fun and joke. I'm just talking out my ass right now. I ain't disrespecting hey. nobody. I'm just talking out my ass right now. I'm high. I'm dripping. I'm sipping on these Budweiser. Thanks to my sponsor, Budweiser. Thank you very much, Black Power. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, um. <laughs> Oh man, turtle food, man. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Like I said, you want to interview, I'm gonna be me. Anybody knows me, I'm a comedian, I'm funny, I'm loose, I'm just me. And I'm not saying loose like my booty chicks is loose, like I'm some prison inmate. I'm loose as in I'm comfortable and I like to have fun. Don't get it fucked up. No homo, nigga. No homo. Hell yeah. Real shit. So like uh man, 
You on the social only media? I like niggas are back of skittles. Hey, that's the only one we. Uh, so like, man, tell us right? where we can. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Where we so tell us uh, what's your social media, man, uh, so we can uh, hit you up on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Eternal Killer Bees. My main page on Facebook is under my is under my born name Latifu Sam's. I have a band page on Facebook, Eternal West Coast Killer Bees, and you can find me on all digital platforms under eternal of killer bees <clears throat> i got multiple tracks with so many mcs i love working with all the artists that i work with i've had the opportunity to work with a lot of you know artists and um you know i enjoy everyone i work with so <clears throat> but yeah eternal of killer bees spotify amazon fucking napster you know, Apple Music, whatever, Eternal of Killer Bees, just like as it is. And you can find some tracks out there. New album, Atlas, uh, 13 tracks, all brand new, um, all me. Um, I do have Raekwon on the album. He'll be mm -hmm. doing a skit. Um, and then I have Capadonna on the album, which we're doing like a freestyle site for um, and then I got my boy DJ Flipside who's doing the cuts on a couple tracks. Other than that, all the tracks are all me solo, no features. You know what I mean? It was just basically to show these niggas out here that I'm an MC who's 44 and been doing this shit since the early 90s and I was still fucking murky. And you can take your fucking gay ass Little Nas X, Mingo's <laughs> finger in the fucking booty bullshit and go to hell with it because this is hip hop real hip hop Wu-Tang motherfucker Wu-Tang did forever do real fucking hip hop yeah you know what I'm saying so hope you niggas got your fucking sword shopping I'm coming to town April 29th you know what I'm saying Wisconsin Reesburg Wisconsin tennis boss and sass I'm about the murky niggas on the mic the next day I'm gonna be in Sandwich Illinois which I hope these niggas bring me a matter of fact, I'm letting this know right now. I'm coming to Sandwich, Illinois. You motherfuckers better bring me a sandwich. A big <laughs> motherfucking sandwich, like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. How are you gonna have me come to Sandwich in Illinois and not no sandwich? What the sandwich? Yeah. Don't you guys wanna show a celebrity how you guys do it in your city of Sandwich, Illinois? What other better way than present me with the Omega of Omega sandwiches? You know, like one of them they got, they got to get you a sandwich, bro. Fucking Bronosaurus yeah. burgers size, yeah. fucking Flintstone sandwiches. The sandwich, the big ass Flintstone sandwich. The, the, the sandwich big when you put it in your car and your car tip over. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, though, man. Um, new album Atlas. Um, I got six producers on it. Uh, my man DJ Ice Man. Uh, uh, Lord B. Jiu Jitsu, my homie Swan, Wooden Beats, Zach King, and my boy, um, Anu L. Bay, um, okay. to help me with the production on this on this project. So it's about to be gutter. Uh, it's being mixed and mastered by my man Steve Vicious, who's also worked with you know, uh, JL Felony. Um, he's a uh, mix and master shit for MC Hammer back in the days. Uh, my mm -hmm. homie, my big homie, Mitchie Slick. Damu, Big June, a lot of OG, you know, greats from San Diego, California. And um, and uh, Jail Felony, everybody know from Def Jam. Yeah, my, so, uh, and me and Vicious, we go back to like 96. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He actually worked on the Castlevania, uh, straight from the Dungeon album from with me, Castlevania 2, the Battle Angels, and then an EP that I did back then and called Blades and Confuse. He mixed it, all those joints. So, and I ain't fucked with the nigga in like fucking... Damn near almost what 16, 17 years or some shit. So after all wow. these years, it's good to fucking have him come back into the picture and be mixing down and mastering this shit. And then once this album's all wrapped up in the music video, I'm gonna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Rizza and uh get his opinions and thoughts on it and shit and see where it goes from there. But uh we will have physical CDs for hardcore fans. Same mm -hmm. state, anyways. 
Okay. Core fans can get CDs. Um, part early early May, I'll have physical CDs and I'll drop the link to get so you can get the vinyl end of May. But for all you digital heads and everybody who wants to try to figure out a way to get the album for free, first of all, suck my fucking dick if you're trying to get my shit for free. I hope you go outside and you get hit by a fucking horse at fast speed. Um, other than that, but for the people out there who like and prefer digital, it will be out the second week of, of June. Um, so we want to make sure we cater to everyone, people who want the digital and people. But uh, but the fans and the people who want physicals, they'll get it first. I'll have part physical CDs in hand uh, available to uh, personally even autograph and to send to people. And then I'm doing a show in Colorado on June 3rd, which will be the first place in the entire fucking world and country to get your hands mm -hmm. on the copy of the physical CD of uh, my new album, because that'll be the first show that I'm doing right after I get the CDs. So everybody who's going to be in my show in Denver at Jumbo's in Denver, Colorado on June 3rd, you guys are going to be the first people and on the entire planet and earth to get your hands on the album. So bring your fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Shake down your sugar daddies, rob your rich parents, <laughs> take your money out of your mama's purse, yeah. go kick a nigga's car window in and take the money out of his fucking dashboard or whatever, but come spend it on me. I don't, <laughs> I don't commit violence, but if you want to go rob a bank, that cool too. Just spend the bread on me. Don't shoot nobody, but rob the yeah. bank and hope get away successfully. You know what I mean? Shit, come buy a whole box, nigga, a hundred copies and shit. I'll give you a deal, thought wow, and some shit. You might go to jail hey. anyways. Might as well give it to somebody who can use it. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> hey. Facts, hey, so, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so, like, man, appreciate you once again, man, for stopping by, like, man, and, and just chopping it up with us, man, and, like, uh, and just spreading your pres presence on this uh, mic with us. Uh, you know, like, man, I definitely got to go back and, like, check out, like, you know, saying, you know, like, man, um, Castle Creeps, like, man, like, you you got, like, a, uh, you, you, got, oh, you got some good. Wow. You got some good, you got some, you got some good work out there, man. I got, <laughs> I got to go back and check. Check out some. You got you got that heat, man. You got that fire, man. And I and I I'm gonna go back and check out a lot of that stuff. And yeah, um, because like a lot of these new cats, man, they they they. Yeah, man. Big shout out to the homies from Castle Creeks, Fino, mm -hmm. Fino, Matlock, and Defy. You know, what yeah. I'm saying that they make the Castle Creeps and see and how the whole thing of Castle Creeps began because I'm in the group Castle Bay along with Fino, and yeah. back in the day I used to work at the airport for Southwest Airlines. I used to pump gas in the planes and shit back in the day. Somebody Southwest told me that. Airlines. I ain't believe that. I Somebody told me that. Fly. I ain't believe that, though. Yeah. Yeah, homie. I used to work for Southwest Airlines. I used to pump the gas and shit, but I got the, the jet fuel and get on your hands and eat your hands up and shit. The jet fuel eat your skin up and some shit. And it just was, I couldn't do it after all. But I met a dude named Adam Fry. And he told me about his two homies who went by a, group, a name of a group called Comfortable Creeps. Comfortable Creeps. They were out of Ocean Beach, California. They were out of OB in Ocean Beach in Cal. In, uh, Cal it, was just, it was just basically San Diego County, but OB. You know what I'm saying? Beach Town, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So, um, and then I brought them to the homie Fino's crib where we had the studio at. And them motherfuckers just fell in love with each other and became best of friends and shit. And <laughs> and they started the whole Castle Creeps and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It was released on my label because I because I own Castlevania Entertainment. And I'm also the creator, the person who put the whole Castlevania, everything together. So with Fino yeah. being a member of Castlevania, out of respect and paying homage to himself and, you know, and to all of us, he, you know, he incorporated his part of Castle you know, from being from Castlevania, and then they incorporated their part of creeps because they were comfortable creeps, and then together they made Castle Creeps. Uh, and, and that's what we talking, and that's what I'm so talking about. Like it's it, Castlevania it, and comfortable creeps coming together. Yeah, and Fino was is a fun. It was is is phenomenal. 
he's one of the dopest rappers in my in 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 my in like entire life that I was hearing growing up. Like he was that dude. Right. Like Fino was beast mode with it. It was not just about him being like some battle rapper or some shit. It was just the shit that he said was like meaningful and touched your heart. And it was just like, and it hit your brain and it just made him like powerful. Like he spit shit that was real. You know what I'm saying? So big love and shout out to the comfortable, uh, to the uh, Castle Creeps. The, the, there's a cap, there's a comfortable creeps album. And then there's a Castle Creeps album, mm -hmm. which both of them I have up under me. I think I still have cap, uh, copies of them somewhere in my shit, in my storage. So you can't find it nowhere, but you can actually find the cap, the comfortable creeps album online. Um, and I still have like CDs and I still have download cards. So if you find that to be something that you're interested in some shit, let me know and I can get you something. I'm definitely is, man. I'm going to hit you up for it. Cause like I said, like, you know, it's a lot of stuff that's like linked to you that like, man, that people don't just don't even uh, know about. And, um, you know, like, man, you, you really put a, a dude, foot, I don't love you for saying there. that. I love yeah. you so much for saying that. Mm -hmm. I love you so much for saying that shit. People, people don't even know. And I get like, I fuck with you got son Intel. I fuck with BB yeah. son, young dirty bastard. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Pete, you know, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I'm saying like, there's a lot of shit I done, you know what I mean? I, like that whole Digi Snacks album that RZA dropped, nigga, yeah. back in like 2009. Like I was on, I was a main, I was in all that shit. That whole Digi, that, Digi, that RZA Digi Snacks album. Nigga, I got so many videos and so much footage, man, trust me, bro. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, nigga, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You was you was tapped you was tapped in in 09. Like what well, people don't know, you was really tapped in in 09. I, 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 I got that shit. Yeah. I got that shit, bro. Trust me. Yeah. I got so much shit, nigga. Like <laughs> I'd be damned if a motherfucker try to say like anything about me. <laughs> like I'm legit. <clears throat> like I I you know I'm a major factor in some parts. <laughs> And I've been out here, you know, you know, pushing myself. But, you know, originally I'm a member of the West Coast Killer Bees, and I was put on by the big homie Sir Eyes. Sir Eyes is the dude who made it for me. He was the dude who actually discovered me, like, after Preach. But Sir Eyes is the one who took really, like, took, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, took, like, you know, interest in me to the point right. where we asked for the demo. And they got me linked up with the Black Knights. A lot of people don't know that I was actually, when I came into the Whoop, as an affiliate member, I was a member of the Black Knights. I'm saying that right now. I don't give a fuck what anybody say. Sir Eyes can fucking tell the truth because we were all right there, even Monk. Because Monk even said, don't make me regret this. I was a member of the Black fucking Knights. Rest in peace, Doc Doom. They thought I sounded like Holocaust, and I had brought that different lingo and shit. shit. I even sat in a fucking car with Crisis a Sharpshooter for like fucking 20, 30 minutes. Going after beat at the beat, and I was spitting bars to the point where Crisis told me to stop. He said, "Okay, okay, 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 okay. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got that off lingo. That was his exact words. You got that off lingo. You know what I'm saying? I was brought right. in as a member of the fucking Black Knights, the Wu Tang Black Knights, the group that RZA signed. I was brought in as a member of that. But then, within like a two to three weeks span." There was some shit that popped off, which I don't right. want to discuss. You know, there were just some people who thought they should have been a member of the Black Knights before me because I was just some dude who was just randomly just some stranger coming out of nowhere. <laughs> when there was cats who were, I guess, around a little bit longer than, you know, for a while, that they felt like that should have been my spot. So to keep the coolness and, the, and to squash beefs, I was removed. And oh. no longer a member of the Black Knight. I went into the studio and recorded like fucking like eight or nine joints as a fucking Black Knights member. You know what I'm saying? Wow. At Matlock and Fino Studio. So I have at least eight, nine or eight, nine joints. And I'm screaming Black Knights to the whole thing because I was fucking excited. It was like, I was like fucking just excited. I was hyped. I was like fucking, I was like finally, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. you know what I mean? Like, you know. I just felt like fuck, you know, but 
after all that was done and some shit, you know what I mean? They's like, you know what I mean? You, you know, you West Coast killer bees. And, and I said, okay, cool. And then from there, you know, you know, things just, you know, went from there or some shit. But, you know, but I went out to, and built my own name on brand and, you know, and started building and networking with other Wu-Tang Clan members and other cats from Killer Army, Sons of Man, you know what I'm saying? And Wu Syndicate and, you know, you know, and just, you know, and just other hip hop heads in general, like Mortal Technique and Cypress Hill and Ice-T and Cannabis right. and, you know what I mean? And just, you know, Bone Thugs and Harmony and Do or Die shit and i was just out there just doing shows with multiple people not just putting all my eggs in the one basket of woo you know what i'm saying the woo was main was the was the main seasoning but the water was filled with multi vegetables right you know what i'm saying it was a good stew a big old pot of gumbo that created me i like you i like you man well uh again man we appreciate you again for like stepping oh my wife is here you want to see oh, her? Yeah. Nah, she might bake the. Yeah, she said nah, yeah, because she probably break the camera. Nah, she probably break the camera. Your camera lens is shattered and shit. You got to read the interview. Yeah. Ain't that? You want to say hi? You want to say anything? No, I'm horrible. Hi. You want to say fuck that nigga? You want to say fuck eternal? Fuck that nigga. Fuck yeah, I've been telling. Your money now. Yeah, because I've been telling these niggas all damn day, nigga. Fuck you. I still can't get rid of your ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if any, if nobody, hey, hey, where the fuck? Yeah. Nobody drive Uber. I'm gonna pay fifteen dollars and shit to put her in a car and shit. Wherever she goes, I don't give a fuck. Just make sure you don't come back. You know, you just keep going forward. Whatever oh, the fifteen dollars take, it takes her to the Greyhound station and some shit. And I guess, oh well, just make sure you don't come and delete my address out of your shit too. I don't want no evidence of where she where she came from because I want nobody trying to bring her back. Fuck that's a that's no that's a real trip, that's man. a real marriage man one way flight no return you sound, no, you no got round a, you trip, got a real dude. marriage no round trip <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So, so so like man yeah i could talk hey. all the goddamn shit i want to talk about at the end of the goddamn day i talk all the shit about her but at the end of the goddamn day if anyone fucks with me if i get hurt if anyone disrespects me, if anyone to bring bullshit to our home, if 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 I'm short, if 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 I'm low on something, shoot there, and I have to literally fucking put that down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll say that. But other than that, though, she can kiss my ass. <laughs> But I love her. Yeah. But it's it's marriage. Yeah, it's marriage, man. I think I that's 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 the route. beauty. Yeah, that's the beauty she's of the marriage, gang, man. She's a gangster. She's a gangster, yeah. but she get on. She's a gangster, and she's and she's in my corner when she's in my corner when it, when it needs to be. When the shit goes down, right. she's right there. She don't run. And, and 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 to be honest, she'll probably step step up before me. And that's being one thousand. That's the type of chick she is. She ain't gonna take no shit from nobody. That's the reason why I have a hard time. So she's she's really bad. And she's a white girl. She's Italian. You know what I mean? So she's and, and so she's she she bout it. You know what I mean? But other than that, yeah, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. What do we say? She can kiss my what? Ass. <laughs> that's right. Good doing, America. I'm glad you guys have been tuning in with me. You guys are great and awesome. Woo! Shit, I need Dr. Phil, motherfucker. <laughs> I need Dr. Phil good. Where the blunt at? That's All right, Dr. man. Phil. Dr. Phil good. Okay. Good. Hey, so we gonna let we gonna let you go, Eternal man. And um, we, we uh, I hope to see you there at the show. Like, uh, I'll probably be in the building oh, uh, tomorrow are too. You gonna let me go? You gonna cut me off? You gonna cut me off? <laughs> you gonna let me go, nigga? Nobody, nobody don't let me. No, no, no. Nobody <laughs> lets me go. Nobody don't tell me when the interview ends. I end the motherfucking interview. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? I'm yeah. Eternal Tyson. You know what I'm saying? I'm the second cousin of Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying, son? All right, motherfuckers. This interview was over. <laughs> you understand me? I love and I appreciate all you motherfuckers for listening to me.
You got it. This is the champ speaking. Make sure you cop my new fucking album, Atlas. Drop in June, yeah. but I will have physicals and vinyls early as May. All right, check me out. I'll be live in concert tomorrow. Tender benders and sass. <laughs> White bitches come out, show your titties and ass. Oh, yeah. April 29th, tomorrow night, Betty. Don't open up at eight or seven. But anyway, show don't pop in till nine anyway. So get your ass out yeah. there. I'll be in Illinois the next motherfucking day, spitting that Wu Tang slang. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, man, it's going down at Route 34 Pub and Grub, April 30th, Sandwich, Illinois. Come out, have a good time. I don't bite. I'm easy to meet, meet and chop it up with. I'm not charging nobody to shake my hand and take a photo. You know what I mean? Just keep your bitch from me because she's hot and she might, not, she might not go back home with you, bro. It might be a wrap for you. It's going to be you and lotion. Man, fuck the turtle. <laughs> fuck that good guy. <laughs> but yo, and sure. uh, like I said, you can check me out on Instagram at Eternal of Killer Bees. You can find me on all digital social media platforms on for music um um on uh, Eternal of Killer Bees. Um, and if you want to tap into me on Facebook, just look me up. You can put Eternal KV, or you can search my born name Latifu Sam's. And uh, yeah, man. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for fucking acting the fool with me. I had a great time. My voice is damn near shot. I got to reserve it. Time for some lemon and honey. You know what I'm saying? Meditation things and some mint to get my shit back on point. But, yo, I thank you, DJ Potential. Thank you, VT, for making this happen. And Ad Miller for putting the connection together. Because um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have knew about VT. And then if VT didn't put me in contact with you, then this, you know what I'm saying? So it's a three way thing you know what i'm saying two in the pink one in the stink you know what i'm saying so uh yeah. that was wrong <laughs> but anyways i love you guys much love east coast west coast down south central areas midwest areas peace to y'all eternal wu-tang killer bees you know what i'm saying tap in check out the interview share it with your friends and family all right i'm done talking peace all right, peace. Hey, he he said all I needed to say. <laughs> Appreciate you.